Howdy folks, welcome back to Doing Brew. This is video number two of a two-part series on how to build a craftsman style surround around a sliding door. A sliding door that goes out onto a patio or onto a deck. But hey, let me point out that the techniques that I show you here on how to build a surround around a sliding door could be used for any doorway, really a window, as well as a hallway passageway or in part one, we completed the jam and header board installation as well as the casings. In this video, we're gonna cover the complete build of the entablature, which is the part that sits above the door itself. The entablature in my design is really simple, but I think it's very striking. It has a base board on the entablature, just a thin piece of stock. Then a large open field, which is called the freeze. And then on top of that is a nice cornice that's set off with some crown molding. Real easy to do, doesn't require any advanced carpentry techniques, but wow, the finished product is really nice. So hey, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is uh, go ahead and fill this in. Uh, the seam on the header board and you can see just where it's a little uneven there where it joined up. We're going to go ahead and sand that smooth. First thing we got to do though is go ahead and set those nails below the surface. Of course you have to do this throughout the project. At this point we'll just go ahead and get these set, fill that entire seam and the nail holes. Then we'll let that set up and we'll sand it smooth later. Well, as we did before in part one, let's go ahead and get all of our terms identified so we, uh, we know what we're working with. On the lower part, you've got the entablature base, and then the freeze, and then we'll apply the cornice, and then the crown molding. That entire piece is called the entablature. So now that we've got our terms straight, let's go ahead and start putting this thing together. Gonna measure for the entablature base first, and that works out to 147 and three quarters. We'll go ahead and get that cut out. However, it won't be the first piece we apply. I'll uh, give you more on that here in just a moment. Okay, next I'm going to fit my router with a 1 8 inch roundover bit and I'm going to just ease the edges of the bottom and top of the front and left and right sides. Nothing too drastic, I just want to ease that edge just a little bit. Then we'll go over with the palm sander and then we'll finish up with the sponge sander, uh, which if you've seen any of my other videos I really like to use this thing. because. Now the spackling's all dried up, we're going to go ahead and give that uh, joining piece there on our header a good sanding. Certainly much easier to do this uh, before we go any further with our assembly. Okay, now it's time to start working on the freeze. I'm cutting the uh, freeze to five and a half inches wide out of a one by pine. I purchased a one by 12, it was just a little more economical to do it that way, and then cut two pieces out. As you saw me do in part one, whenever I'm joining two pieces of wood, I like to cut it at a 45 degree angle. So we'll get a good clean 45 degree cut, and then we'll get a nice straight cut on the end. And again, we'll sand before we take it into install. Okay, now it's time to install the first uh, board of our freeze. I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid nails. As always, anytime wood meets a painted surface or anything other than wood, you use liquid nails. 
I put a uh, reference line over there to the left so I know how far over to go with my glue. Wouldn't want to apply too much and then it would uh, be tacky before I'm ready. Now here it's important to note that over there on the right side, you see Carrie pointing to it, I installed a piece of scrap for, uh, from my ontologer base. That'll be important here in a moment. I'll show you what I'm doing. We'll get this just in place, make sure that shim stays where it's supposed to. We'll get this lined up with the right reveal below, and we'll go ahead and tack it in place. And we'll go all the way down the board and secure it. Now, it's important for you guys to know what you've got on the other side. I know I have a uh, 4x12 as the headboard, so I've got something really solid to nail into. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install the other piece of our freeze, the piece that completes us over to the left. And we'll be installing the liquid nails. And then where wood meets wood, a lot of, of a good quality wood glue. I like both of the Type Bond products. Well, there's more than more than two, but Type Bond one and two uh, are very good selections for glue. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and take some time, a lot of time, to make sure that this joint right here lines up nice and cleanly top and bottom and across the face frame. Looks like I've got it pushed in a little too far. So I'm gonna hit the piece that's already secured and it'll help ease that out a little bit. Okay, now I'm using the crown stapler. I'm gonna put four staples in. It's important to note here, I'm going from the piece that's secured to the right, through the front, and then into that piece on the other side. Again, I know I'm going into a 2x12, so I've got uh, a lot of bite coming from that 2x12. Okay, now here's just a quick look of an already completed ontologer base on another door frame. And the reason why I didn't install that first is this piece of flat stock under 147 plus inch run uh, is going to be somewhat flexible. It's going to have quite a bit of bow uh, towards the center. So I needed that solid structure to glue and nail that on top of your base too. That's why I went ahead and installed the freeze first. Now glue and nails and I've got a real solid structure to uh, make sure I get a real nice true straight on top of your base all the way across this door frame. So we'll take time to ensure we have the proper reveals and again using the crown stapler secure in that copter base. Okay, now it uh, starts getting a little bit fun for me at least, uh, where we start uh, building out a little bit of depth to our entablature uh, and our whole door surround uh, with the very top of the cornice. Now, as I've done before in previous projects, I'm using that five quarter stock. What that means is it's a, it's a true one inch thick. And again, because I have such a long run, I'm gonna have to uh, put two pieces together. So. We're gonna cut a 45, we're gonna make sure we have a nice true end, we'll clean up that, that bitter end from the factory, and then we'll sand and make sure it looks real nice. So I'm taking a little bit of extra time here just to ease those the front leading edge corners uh, to make it uh, just a little softer. I don't want that factory sharp edge running across there. So again, wood meets wood. We're gonna run that tight bond too along the top of the freeze all the way across and we'll set that on top of your top the top of our cornice in place 
the top of the cornice with the reference mark I made it two inches. It's a lot easier to work with a reference line than to have a tape measure uh, while you're holding the top of the cornice and trying to nail it at the same time. You just get that in place and then pop a couple nails in. And I'm using a uh, 16 gauge, two inch long finish nail here. Honestly, I would have liked to have gone a little bit more than a two inch overhang on the left and right, but I'm constrained with the wall there on the right side and the kitchen cabinets on the left. But two inches uh, does provide a good three eighths of an inch um, overhang beyond the size of the crown molding that we'll install next. Okay, so we just completed the 45 degree mating cut there on one end of the second part of our cornice. And then I'm just gonna cut this to a rough dimension that will get me into the house so I can kind of cheat a little bit and make sure I get exactly the right length cut. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark the two inch reference point for my overhang on the end which mates in the middle, okay? And then I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to turn it end for end. You see I've got the blunt side there, the square side to the left. There's my mating piece. I'm lining up that two inch mark. It looks good. Now I'm going to mark exactly where I need that cut to be. Okay? That makes it real easy. There's no heavy duty math or anything, which uh, if I can avoid that at all costs, I will. Okay, we'll go ahead and make that uh, square cut and we'll bring her inside. Okay, we'll go ahead and add our bead of glue along the top of the freeze. We'll glue heavy on that mating piece. Make sure we got plenty of glue. Go ahead and set her in place. Then just like before, we're gonna take uh, quite a bit of time and patience to make sure that that center piece there where the two pieces join up is about as perfect as we can get it. Okay, making sure top and bottom, and most importantly, the front are nice and flush. Once we got it, we'll put a couple nails in. All right, so initially a, a long finish nail, but then I'm gonna go back with my crown stapler and just really, quite honestly, staple the heck out of that thing. It's, um, it's on the top side, you're not gonna see that. Plus, we're gonna fill it and sand it and fill it and sand it a number of times. That whole uh, joint, as well as all those staple holes are gonna completely disappear. And we'll go ahead and uh, finish securing it all the way across the top of the freeze. Okay, we're almost done. Now it's time to start working on the crown molding. And I'm gonna mark and cut the left side piece first. And I'll use that once I get it just right to uh, cut the right side. The tricky part about cutting crown molding is you have to do it upside down and backwards. And while that might sound uh, a little bit strange, after you make your first couple of crown molding cuts, it'll make perfect sense to you. All right, so let's go ahead, bring it in the house, see how it fits. And looks like it's a little bit long there by a good uh, eighth of an inch. Unfortunately, that piece is just too small to hold safely with the, the cut on the miter saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my belt sander and flip it upside down, put it on the bench. Now it's a bench top sander, and we'll be able to remove that uh, wood down to the proper dimensions. Much safer than cutting it with the miter saw. Okay, now it's time to measure for the long run of crown. And wouldn't you know it, but uh, I got a piece that was about three inches too short. But no worries, we'll go ahead and as we've done before, we'll cut it at 45 degrees and we'll uh, we'll put a mating piece in there. Uh, it'll take a little longer to, to fill. If you can do it in one long run, that's the best way to do it. Um, but we'll fill it and you'll never know it was there. 
This is the right side cut for the miter that's down by the wall. And then we'll slide it down and make that um, adjoining cut on the left side. Okay, this next step is going to be a little challenging. On both the left and right sides of the crown, we get that little tiny piece. That's going to be near impossible, if not absolutely impossible, to nail in place. So I've asked for the help of strong back Aiden, and I'm going to hold this uh, piece nicely glued up together. Nice corner there, and he's going to nail it for me. Okay, now that that piece is uh, secured with both glue and nails, it uh, goes into place just perfectly. And as always, a uh, good bead of wood glue across the top and bottom edge of that crown where it meets the frieze and the top of the cornice, and securing it with crown molding staples. I'm running those staples up about five to six inches apart. I'm going to leave the last six, eight inches there to the left free so I can work that uh, together a nice clean miter with that adjoining piece. Here I am assembling the corner for the left side just as I did before. Put it together with uh, glue. Go ahead and nail it and then that will fit into place just perfectly. I'll secure that and then give that mating uh, joint a real good sanding uh, before we go ahead and prep this thing for painting. And hey, as I mentioned previously, take a look at this link right here, click on it. That'll take you to the painting techniques video on how to completely prepare and paint your trim work to have a beautiful finish. This is certainly something that most folks can knock out. If you have any questions or concerns, please send me an email or leave a question in the comment. I'm happy to follow up. Well, thanks a lot, folks. Appreciate you joining me here on Doing Brew. If you're gonna try and tackle this project, I know you can do it. Good luck, and we'll see you back here next time on Doing Brew. Take care, folks.